Glory to God. We greet the church and the brethren who are on Zoom with the peace of the Lord Jesus. It is a great joy to be here with the brethren. Uh, I'm bringing greeting from the church from England and the church from Dublin and Ireland. It's a great joy to live in this fellowship. We know that after going through this difficult period, which was the period of pandemic, it's already left behind, right? When living a new time. But it's very good that this pandem pandemic, it brought the church back closer together. Today, the Church of England, as well as the Church of the United States, they are very close. We do a lot of work together, especially uh, praise, translation of uh, songs and translation of songs for the children. Pastor Renew has always been with us. Every seminar, he's present there, helping us. And for us, it's been a great joy because we have a lot in common. We speak the same language. We all speak Portuguese, right? <laughs> we have the same difficulty as you with regard to language and culture. But we can glorify the Lord because He has helped us in everything. The churches have grown. The work of the Lord has grown. The doctrine is well established in our midst. Today, with the satellite, with the internet, with the social network, we can do everything that the brethren live here in, in the United States and in Brazil. The brethren we also have gone through in England. And that's the secret of the prosperous church, a strong church, when we obey the revelations of the Lord. This is a source of great joy for us to be with the brethren here. We would like to invite the church, the ones who can, to stand up, to read the word of the Lord in a very well-known psalm, Psalm 129. Psalm 119. So not many has read because we're going to read the last verse of Psalm 119. Verse 176. Glory to God. 119, verse 176. 176. Amen, my brethren. What the Lord said the following. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, bless, bless us through your word, and through your word you may speak to our hearts. Lord, we ask that there may be a blessing, a renewal, and restoration in our lives. We we'll pray to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, we were praying for the service, and the Lord gave a couple of spiritual gifts, that, which are a manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the midst of the church. And the Lord was showing the need of a few of us who are here. And the Lord has shown that there was an angel from the part of the Lord, and the angel would bring to tonight a special food to a lady who came here to the church. She was very weak, and she recognized that she was like that. She was thinking about giving up on her spiritual walk. But the Lord has shown that that when she saw an angel that was inviting her to feed when she was when she, once she fed her joy was brought back. And the Lord was saying that there is he has a blessing of renewal for one of the sisters that came here. She came very tired through the because of the trials of this life. And also in another spiritual gift, the Lord has shown that there is also another sister and she was walking together with the heavenly army and she had her garments garments and her weapons, but she was looking back looking back too many times. And she was also had a thought of giving up and stop walking with this army. But then the general of this army gave an order because he had noticed that she had this thought and told her that she, this is not time to give up. 
because the target is very close. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The target's very close, and if she looks backward, she runs the risk of the enemy army to uh, get to her. The time is to move forward and continue on the walk. My brethren, the text that we just read, the Psalm here, 119, is the greatest psalm of the Bible. In the last verse, the psalmist asks, uh, makes a request of help. And it's interesting that he's going to make an analogy that is particularly one of the most beautiful in the Bible. Because he's going to speak about two illustrations which are in the Bible since the Old Testament and also in the New Testament, which is the illustration of the shepherd and the illustration of the sheep. We know that Jesus is the good shepherd that gives his life for the good sheep, right? For, for his sheep, right? And we are sheep of his pasture. He has cared for us. The shepherd provides everything that the sheep needs. He provides the food and security. He's always paying attention to the needs of the sheep. Why? Because the sheep is a weak animal. It's a simple animal. Has not doesn't have good vision. One of the most important characteristics of the sheep uh, is that the sheep is gregarious. It needs to live as a group because a sheep, when it is go, uh, it goes astray and becomes a weak prey to their uh, predators, the wolf, the lion, the bear. So the sheep needs to be together with the flock, and we are in the same way, like this. We need to be here in fellowship. We need to be one taking care of another, warring to one another. That's what the Lord has revealed in the midst of the church, the groups of assistants. The Lord has appointed deacons and ushers to be taking care of the church. And then the pastor also to teach, to correct, to exhort us, but also to give comfort, to care. And this is a great blessing that we have. And the psalmist is going to place before the Lord. He's going to say, I got astray like a lost sheep. And he will recognize himself in a very sad situation, a difficult situation. He says, Lord, I went astray. I went afar from the flock. Lord, I'm no longer in your shelter. Lord, I went straight like a lost sheep. What, when we realize that he is in the situation, and he makes a request of help. Many times we are in the church, participate in the service online, and in presence. But many times, even inside of the church, we don't feel the same fellowship with the Lord. No, we don't feel the presence of the Lord. We don't feel the touch of the Spirit in us. But we recognize one thing. It was not the Lord that went apart from us, but we were the ones who went astray from the Lord. And at this time, like the psalmist, we have a resource before the Lord, which is the pleading, the prayer. And he makes a prayer. I went straight like a lost sheep. So he makes a request. Seek your servant. Seek your servant. He went astray. He was far away. He makes a request of help. And he says, Lord, come to my encounter. Bring me back to your shelter. And it is interesting that how he places himself as he places himself as a servant. And not as a, a Lord. He does not give an order to God. He makes a request to God. He asks the Lord, Lord, seek a servant. And in the, in the difficult moments of our lives, we have this resource, resource of pleading to the Lord. 
and to call upon the name of the Lord with sincerity and to ask the Lord, Lord, come towards me. Lord, I don't have strength. I'm weak. Lord, I need your help. Seek your servant. Maybe we have brethren here tonight that may be requesting, making this request to the Lord. They want to feel once again the burning of the presence of the Lord in their hearts. They want to feel like the Lord is together with them. And the secret for this, my brethren, is to do according to the psalmist. Lord, seek your servant. And he makes this request. And he explains why he wants to make this request. And he says, seek your servant, because we have not forgotten your commandment. My brethren, how can we forget the love of our God? How can we forget what God has done in our lives one day? Uh, with a strong hand, it took us out of the world. It changed our history and changed our life. It took us out of the mud of sin and brought us into His beautiful light. How can we forget the times where many times we were offended? The Lord was our attorney defense attorney, how many times how can we forget many times we are being judged by other people, accused but the Lord was our judge blessed be the man of the Lord and as a judge he absolved us not because we were not uh, guilty, but he absolved us because he is merciful, he is wonderful and he knows our structure, he knows the sincerity of our heart. Lord, I have not forgot your love. Lord, I haven't forgotten your help. I have not forgotten your correction. Because he corrects us. He sh uh, shows to us our mistake and make us understand our mistakes and he corrects us so that we may remain in his presence. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, I went astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant because not forgotten your commandment. The psalmist says, Lord, I heed your word in my heart so I would not sin against you. The secret of the psalmist is that the word was not in the mind. The word that he had kept was had not, he didn't keep it in other place, but he kept it in his heart. And when we keep the commandment of the Lord in our hearts, my brethren, when we are about to make a mistake, remember the teaching and the doctrine, remember what the Lord has taught us every day, and that prevents us from making a mistake. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord. Lord, I haven't forgotten. I have not forgotten your doctrine. Lord, uh, my brethren, we may have lived in isolation, alone, but today we live as a family. My brethren, we live by faith. The secret of the servant at this moment is to live by faith is to live a life canceling himself in order to please the Lord. Today, the gift, the spiritual gift the Lord has given us, the Lord was speaking about brother and sister, maybe a, a, she's speaking about sister, but maybe a couple of men that were about to give up. They were thinking about abandoning the walk and abandoning the Lord. But tonight is a night of restoration. It's a night of renewal. The night that, that your Lord giving us to reconcile even more with Him. And in this sincere request, the Lord heard the Lord heard him and blessed him. In in England. And there's a sister that was an elderly 
and she discovered she had a very serious disease. She lives in another country, uh, the Wales, and it's about three hours from her house. And she lives in uh, Wales, Pastor Renilda, she lives in Wales, and travels for three hours, participated on a service of 40, 50 minutes. And then she returned three hours later back home. And we see those examples that we hear, see in our midst, in the midst of the church. And I confess to the brethren that we sometimes we feel ashamed because we feel like it's too far away sometimes to tra drive 30, 40 minutes by car. We think it's difficult. And those examples, they are so wonderful because we see the importance of the service the worth that this woman gives to the service, the worth that this woman gives to be in the house of the Lord and or participate in the service and to be gathered in the church and praising the name of the Lord. He touched our hearts and make us and allow make us feel like we need to be better people, more dedicated to the kingdom of God. <coughs> The Lord does not need us to do His work. But He has trusted His kingdom to us. The Lord does not need man, but He trusted to man the, the duty of doing His will. My brethren, how wonderful it is to see a person in need that is going straight. You see that person going like this. And you, the first thing that you do is to be Start praying for that person, saying, Lord, show the situation to her, open her eyes so that she may be able to see and begin to pray without her knowing. Then you start fasting, you consecrate yourself for her, and that then the person begins to receive a renewed joy and goes back to fellowship and begins to want to pray, play instruments in the church and pray in the church. And we are so joy receives such joy when we see things like this happening and we need to confess to the Lord that none we our desires that none that have been given to the Lord may go astray but they may all be saved and you who are here tonight you have been chosen by God God called you to be part of his kingdom you have been rescued by you have been rescued with a uh, high price, a price that Jesus paid on the cross for us. Salvation is free for us for, to acquire it. But Jesus paid a high price for us. And today, my brethren, we can be here, do according to the psalmist did. Lord, I went, I went astray like a lost sheep. Lord, I need the good shepherd. I need Jesus to go towards me, Lord. Help your servant, because I have not forgotten your commandments. Blessed be the Lord. Amen, my brethren. Let's close our eyes and praise the praise to the Lord. Glory to God.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the, the name of the Lord. Exalted be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Around the Lord also has given a spiritual gift, speaking regarding a man, a person who is here tonight, and is living a situation that is in a, in a court that has been dragging for years, and he has recently been stealing his blessing with the Lord and bringing, causing difficulty in his home, and causing a lack of harmony in his, in his family. But tonight, when he heard from the part of the Lord that we have a Jesus, Jesus us, our attorney, and our father as the judge, our judge, this brother has understood a secret for his victory. He is going to begin to practice his faith with greater intensity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The faith is this mystery. I heard today a testimony of a person that she told me that she waited for 28 years for a promise, uh, which was the salvation of her husband. 28 years. Everyone else have already given up. The children have already given up. But she kept in her heart a promise from the Lord. And she saw it being fulfilled in her life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's faith. This is what it is to trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. And so we need to practice. And when the psalmist says, I haven't forgotten the faith, he does this, right? My brethren, he does not allow us to forget. We live by faith, trusting the Lord. Amen. Let us stand up. I want to hear a word of adoration and glorification to the Lord. I want to praise your name. Yep. Because the Lord is bringing to our memory that day in which the Lord has reached us. We praise you, Lord. We can, we can say, to this day, the Lord has helped us, has sustained us. We praise you, Lord, because nothing has taken us out of the path. The trials have come, but the victories are, victories are also. You have won those victories for us. We praise you and glorify, Lord, for this night in your presence in the presence of your angels in our midst, for your word, for your for the care of our good shepherd, who is our Lord. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Lord, we praise you, Father. We glorify you, Lord, for this door you have opened in this city. Lord, for the lives that we're able to find and know the Lord in this church. Lord, we praise you because you have sustained your people in this place. Lord, we praise you for the promises that we have of growth, of strengthening. We praise you, Lord, because we live, Lord, depending on you. We see, Father, the praise and gratitude of your church. Lord, continue blessing your people, your church, your servants, whatever they might be. And your hand may be laying upon us, giving the deliverance, healing, every deliverance. We ask that you receive this service. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit. Remain with your people of your church and the entire godly Israel. Until the return of the Lord Jesus, Amen. The church may be seated. Pastor Nude asked to remind the church that tomorrow at 10:30 in the morning, we are going to have here the Sunday school, and the church is conclaimed to be here. The parents are going to bring their children so that they can receive the teaching from the part of the Lord. And I also would like to thank the the brethren who are visiting us tonight. If anyone desire a prayer. We, the deacons and ushers, are going, you are here, available to pray for whoever desires. Any other announcement? Amen. The instruments are going to be soloing. The church is going to be waiting for the assistance until everyone else, the peace of the Lord. <laughs> 